All right. All right. Welcome. Planet Xbox Episode 3, powered by Weapon Will Podcast and the Weapon Will Network. Special episode today. Uh, but before we get into that, I am your host, Best Spot Kid Smooth. Got my co host, Lord Addict. What's going on, guys? And that's not all. That's not all. We got it's that time of year Christmas for gaming, Christmas for Xbox. I got the man with the million in here, Rand L. Thor 19. What's up? What's up, Kid Smooth? What's up, Attic? Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I think this is like the first time I've ever been on one of your own podcasts, Smooth. I think. I mean, really? I don't know. It's It's been a while, but I'm not sure you ever really have ever really asked me to be on like yeah. one of your shows before. I've I can't. Been on shows with you. Yes. But not on my show. Oh, that's strange. Damn, I, I could have used you for when the podcast was on my channel then. But damn. <laughs> I mean, I, you did ask. I'm like, hey, all you got to do is just ask. And I'll be, I'll, I'll come on. <laughs> so here we are. I, I, you know, I'm sure we're going to be talking about showcase predictions, right? Absolutely. And whatever else that uh, you have <laughs> ready for us to discuss. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it's pretty much all uh, about the showcase. We've actually prematurely named i think the, f- the first podcast after the, like predictions but we actually didn't predict anything we kind of changed it but she was like oh we won't do predictions now we'll just whatever so um but this one is the the the, the true prediction show and who's best to have than rand outdoor you know everybody calls uh rand uh for prediction shows yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> so, it's been a busy week for me this week so far and it's only going to get even busier Yes, absolutely. We are we're about just over, you know, a week away um, from the showcase and um, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm sure everybody who's uh, watching the showcase is looking forward to it. We got our predictions where um, again, I think for like the third year, there hasn't been any massive like leaks on the Xbox side of things. I mean, unless I've been under a rock, but I haven't really found the outside of that starfield controller but that that looked like a while ago <laughs> but um it's looking more real uh than um than ever now um so this show is gonna go uh you know a bit different i kind of put up like a, a list of questions a list of like you know like true or false uh likely not likely but just a list of questions about the showcase to see if we can like get something uh going and see what we think is going to happen at the showcase and then you know we could you know free flow uh for the rest of the show but before we get into the podcast and ran you are free to chime in on some of these patreon uh questions we're gonna go uh to the patreon uh uh, site to look at some of the questions that has been posted uh for planet xbox uh this week um I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm monitoring the thing, but it feels like I'm coming through two feeds. Hopefully I'm not echoing, man. Um, but let's uh, go to the Patreon questions. First one is from Lady Hawk. Uh, she says, hey, guys, been enjoying the pod so far and excited for where this goes under the Weapon Wheel Network. I'd like to know your thoughts on a recent acquisitions made by Netflix Games. They've added some pretty well-known talent to their team, members from God of War and Xbox Game Studios, and they are working on a new AAA title. What do you think about Netflix and their push to get into AAA gaming space? Also, if you've done well, could their it also if done well, could their method and approach to game streaming become a potential competitor to Game Pass? Attic, do you want to tackle Netflix. that question? I can see it, but here's the thing, like, what we want from, like, gaming, I don't know if that's exactly what Netflix has in mind. I have to see exactly, because it does look like they are going to start publishing stuff on everything. It's not just, like, we're going to make you play it on our on our service. I'm just curious on if they see the returns on stuff like that, are they going to amp that up? It's Are they going to start funding AAA products themselves and... You know, I, I have to see what their roadmap is before I really comment too much on Netflix and the gaming industry. 
it's weird because like right now um the, they just kind of do mobile games and they're just mobile titles that you kind of log into your Netflix account and then download them from the iOS or Android store, I believe is how it works. Even if they're like Netflix branded. Uh, this would be different. Like they hired Joseph Staten. They just got the art director of like the God of War games from, from Sony. And they're building a huge game that would signify uh, really a change from that. Like I, I doubt it would be a cloud experience where it's like, oh, it's like it's a mobile game. So that'd be something that you would probably have to publish on PCs and consoles. And we're already seeing, because I, I remember you going off about this, uh, Smooth, was Oxenfree 2 isn't coming to Xbox. And that is a studio and IP, I believe, owned by Netflix. But it is coming to PlayStation and Switch, as well as mobile. So you could have a scenario where whatever game this is make whatever game they're making, which you know, might take five to six years at this point because we all know how long games take to make. And the question I have is, is Netflix still going to be gung-ho about games five years from now? Right? Because Google, Google was like, yeah, we're in this. We're in this whole situation about gaming. And they realized how much money it took. <laughs> and then they realized exactly, like Addict said, how much money it took. And they backed out real quick. You know, Amazon, Luna, they're in here too. But they're not really doing anything. They just kind of exist, right? Yeah, they're so just I wonder, hosting. Yeah, so I wonder, will, will Netflix's stance towards games change by the time this big game comes out to the point where maybe it never comes out or it's scaled down or whatever? Um, but Netflix coming in could only really be good for the industry. More competition breeds more innovation. Uh, you know, so... I you know yeah maybe it could be a competition to Game Pass maybe it could be competition to all the other ones uh, you know everyone's fighting for your time and your money so yeah I would welcome Netflix getting in here and competing uh, for our money and our time that'd be that'd be actually pretty good. Do you think if they see massive success they might jump in the console market? No, I don't think building a console just. It's too much, costs too much. I don't think anybody's building a console. I think the only person that yeah. would have the potential to build a console is Apple. Especially uh, now when it almost seems like maybe you might be getting away from the console mm -hmm. in 10 years, you know, with cloud gaming and everything. You never know. Apple going to make a console called the iBox. The iBox. Yeah, I don't think that... <laughs> you know that what's funny is, is Apple makes more money than anybody on gaming. In the mobile department. And they don't even... they don't. All they do is just sell other people's games on the App Store. Like, yeah. why? What does Apple need to make a console for? Yeah, you know. So I, I think um, the Netflix situation is like, I don't believe in Netflix uh, gaming. Um, no, I don't want it. Obviously, I don't want it to fail or anything. Is it's good to see, but it's like I don't trust uh, these other big companies: Amazon, Google, Netflix joining Facebook. I don't. Uh, for the simple fact, because are they truly in there for the long haul? Um, people like the people like from God of War, people like Joseph Staten, uh, taking a huge risk by going to a company not known for gaming. And it, it, they're taking the same risk that the people m made when they went over to Google. Um, so it, it's hard to say um to see how can they be a uh, major competitor to game pass absolutely because they already have the the install size to uh um lap game pass if they have even like even moderate success so it's always a possibility um and depending on how serious they take it uh, i do find it strange that i didn't realize they own um oxen free the fact that uh, i thought previously that you know microsoft xbox had a good relationship uh, with Netflix for the simple fact uh, Netflix probably owes it to Xbox for really mm -hmm. pushing Netflix to the next level during the 360 era um, when Netflix really got uh, digital ties and it became more of a you know a streaming platform I think Xbox 360 was the first one uh, to have it that app on a console before it eventually made its way to you know the, I think maybe the Wii uh the uh ps3 and stuff like that and it was a big deal at the time because that was outside of like your regular tvs and stuff xbox i uh, had uh one of the larger install base and it introduced a lot of people uh to netflix the way that we know it 
today. So I am surprised that, you know, they wouldn't publish uh, or put out games on Xbox. But from a competitive standpoint, you know, I see they exclude, you know, Xbox uh, try to make money on PlayStation Nintendo, but, you know, still keep something from Xbox because clearly they see Xbox as a threat. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, Next question comes from mafia quad he actually asked two questions let me see uh he says any ideas and this is this is a question for rand any ideas when gears 6 is going to happen and what story path it'll choose from the previous game's ending well i'm sure you've seen it uh cliffy b on twitter basically said Mm -hmm. that uh coalition making the like having gamers make that choice was a coward's move uh, which I, t- I tend to agree with. I think if I, I was kind of blown away, they actually made l- like that was the decision they let you make instead of something they made themselves. Cause it opens up a whole can of worms about like, okay, well, what is the canon ending who lived and who died? How is that going to affect your six? Is there going to be like, Oh, well actually your choice didn't matter. Everybody who chose this person. Well, guess what? It was actually this person who lived. Um, yeah, I think they'll do a canon. I agree. Yeah, they're gonna have to because they can't. They're gonna. They, it'd be essentially be making not necessarily two games, but like. Well, I mean, should we spoil Gears Five? I mean, it's been the four years at this point, right? Point. Spoiler yeah. alert! Yeah, yeah. spoiler yeah. alert. But you basically decide whether or not. Uh, um, I forget their names. Marcus's mm-hmm. son, <laughs> JD and Dell. JD and Dell. Which one lives and which one dies? Mm-hmm. Now. Story-wise, I thought it made way more sense for JD to live and Marcus to die because Marcus is barely in the what? game. No, and he's no, an no, asshole. Mar- Marcus wasn't an option. Uh, J- JD's son. I thought okay. it was. I thought it made more sense for JD to live because he was best friends with Kate. And Dell uh, was the best friends with Kate. Dell was best friends with Kate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and JD was was an asshole. He wasn't even a really around that much for the second game. And you still had Marcus. And I thought, okay, going forward. That would really sort of change Marcus's character. He could do some crazy things in the last game because JD's dead. It didn't make any sense for me why Kate would pick JD over Dell, considering Dell was with you the whole game. But it seemed to me that the coalition just... I didn't want the backlash of being the ones to choose. Um, so, as for when the It'll game comes... Crazy. What? If, if, we, if we think that we know exactly what they're doing and they do build two games that depending on who you choose in the first yeah game, based on your save file other games have done it though right yeah but it's it's a huge project i doubt they'll do it but all you're doing is replacing the like your it was like your save file is going to have jd in the game and the other person's save file is going to have dell in the game but using the same story related to though yeah but then you know marcus will act differently if uh, you know, yeah, you, my bad. Yeah, that's right? true. That's true. I mean, so you're going to have all these different lines for all these different scenarios. I, I mean, for, for, yeah, I mean, yeah, this true. isn't Mass Effect, right? Where it's like, or whatever, but as for when it comes out, I've always sort of pegged it at the earliest is 2025. Uh, I think Rod Ferguson was just on IGN's Unlocked with Ryan McCaffrey, and I, I believe he even sort of talked about this where he said the next Gears game would would easily be five years because the engine change from Unreal 4 to Unreal Engine 5 would have taken just the engine change like a year and a half. So he said, he would have said the next Gears game would have been a five-year thing and that would have been 2024. So that's next year. Uh, So my line of thinking is 2025 for Gears 6. Maybe a Gears collection next year. Uh, in a similar manner to how they did Ultimate one year and then Gears 4 the next year. Uh, but that's when I'm sort of expecting uh, Gears Gear 6 to uh, show up. Or actually be released, rather. Um, it's... If the, Gears 5 came out in, what, 2019? Um, yep. And I actually thought that was too soon when it came, but uh, um, it's 2023 now. Technically, we're we're due... <laughs> For another uh, a Gears game, um, I I would say I would honestly hope we would be getting some sort of uh, Gears game within the next uh, 12 months, whether it be a collection or Gear 6. Um, and 
I the choice option, you know, it it, it sucks, but there's different ways they could have ran with it. I think what should have happened is they, the 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 what's the name's mom should have uh, uh that's another spoiler should have uh killed Marcus and and that would have been that's what it, that would have been our uh the ending and whatever in their journey cuz like you have Gears 4 which was you know you played as JD but the focus was still relatively around Kate next game you play pretty much primarily as uh Kate JD's there here and there um and they need I, I'm not sure why the coalition would be afraid of backlogs because it's not like we have like long character development with the, the new b- breed of characters. So it wouldn't have been much of anything to kill either JD or um, or Dell. So like it's not like they they had like a, a naughty dog moment. That moment would be to, you know, off Marcus. Um, that really that would be the only real controversial choice, which they probably should have made. Um but other than that, yeah, um, no, I have no, uh, no idea. I, w- I would hope in the next twelve months, addict. Uh twenty twenty five. I agree with Rand. Here's the thing: it, they used to not necessarily rush these things, but they didn't give as much time as they should have on all of these. And I don't think that's the case anymore. I, I don't think Microsoft and Xbox need to just, oh, we got to have this game out by this certain time. They have plenty of games to, you know be there while these games are developing and what what was the point of rushing the game to 2024 when you probably got a vowed uh, there, there's probably two three games next year that could potentially come out so it's like you don't need to rush anything anymore fair enough fair I, en- I agree i agree you know i i do wonder how the engine switch over is happening because even rod said on ign that that was like an it would be a year to a year and a half sort of project just by itself mm-hmm and how much that has, how much that has delayed Xbox games in general, smooth and attic, right? How many games are on using Unreal Engine Five? The whole entire that Xbox is making first like party almost, team. I feel like it's using that engine. It's like, a, and it's like there outside of Fortnite, there hasn't been an Unreal Engine Five game released yet. Yeah. Um. So, I wonder how much that is backed up uh, their releases. But I'm I'm of the I'm I'm kind of like Gears was never given the time to breathe. And let people miss it, right? From yeah. the first game in 2006 to Gears 2 in 2008 to Gears 3 in 2011, right? I think was mm-hmm. the cadence. And then Gears Judgment in 2013. 13. Mm-hmm. And then Gears Ultimate and- was 2015. Mm-hmm. And then Gears 4 was 2016. And then Gears 5 was 2019 with the Gears Tactics and a Gears Pop mm-hmm. around then. So it, it's a franchise that probably needs a break. And has never been given a time where, like, yeah, man, I really miss Gears. But now, 2019, I don't think we'll see Gears this year. Maybe we see it next year. That could give proper... All right, it's been five years, six years. I'm ready for the next Gears adventure, you know? Yeah, it's... I think um, all true in Gears, we'll get that break. I think given that they have all these studios, uh, with obviously with Bethesda in the fold, you got other studios that make those type of gritty games between Machine and, and it, and you know, and Halo uh, is doing this thing, and then you're about to get Activision. You got called you. It, a, a lot of these acquisitions is going to allow some of these studios to really not have to like put out so often because there there should be enough cadence of releases from uh their first party team to allow these games to have a break without you feeling like you're missing something or you're going through any sort of drought um good question mafia uh quad uh he has another one he says now that ai is becoming a thing do you think xbox will use it to speed up development and testing of games since ai doesn't need to rest like humans uh if it question i'm not too Familiar with the capability of cloud outside of chat GPT, <laughs> but um, if it's if it can do that, I mean, I think Microsoft is in the best position to take a, a advantage of it. And hopefully it does, because I think it's crazy how technology advances. Consoles are getting better, you know, uh, CPUs, GPUs, performance is getting better, but game development is taking longer and longer. It, it make it makes no sense. Uh, but, um, I think they would, if they found the ability to do that, but 
that, that's really all I got for that. I well, have no clue when it, on the matter of stuff like so that. So you remember last year, Matt Booty got roasted for this. You guys remember this? No. Yeah, when he I'm said so, play te- when he was commenting on play testing and he yeah, said you could they use, would AI use for it. AI for play testing because you'd be able to like when everyone goes home for the night, you could use the AI to test all these different possible scenarios. And everybody sort of looked at him and was like, You're gonna fire all the QA workers and you're just gonna replace them with AI robots and stuff. And he was like, That's not what I'm talking about. So I mean like yeah, I think Microsoft. I I think look, look. We can debate the ethics of using AI. We can debate the ethics of using ChatGPT taking all, you know, basically stealing content from all the websites or whatever, or using Midjourney, which is just using artists to kind of steal stuff from or writers and things like that. There's the ethics question regarding. AI stealing people's jobs, which is a serious question, right? Uh, and as far as games, it's just in general, you just look at these corporations are going to do what the corporations do. They're going to try to maximize their profits, get things out faster, and pay the least amount of money as they can. At least I think so. So yeah, I mean, I, I think all these corporate, all these video game companies will probably definitely try to use AI to speed up the process uh, in the future, for sure. And a Microsoft, PlayStation, they'll, they'll all use it because it's just going to be like a, an asset for you to, to use. Uh, and at first, it'll be small things, and then it'll be more things, you know, a, a bigger integration. Um, but I think it's only a matter of time, honestly. Yeah, couldn't, you know? have, couldn't have said it better. Um, shout out to... Avery Amber uh, question is, would you want the upcoming Indiana Jones game to be linear or open world and why? Linear. I'm going to say I want, if anything, what would you would you consider like uh, recent Tomb Raiders and like Uncharted linear or like hub or like or those are. Kind of like semi open, but yeah. with linear linear sections, right? Yeah, that's what I would want. I don't. It doesn't need Indiana Jones worlds doesn't need to be open world at all. But I prefer something like focus, but a wide area. You know what I mean? I don't want to do stage to stage and stuff like that. But um, I just want as many like set pieces as possible, mm-hmm. and I feel like that is the game you have set pieces in. And you don't want to lock yourself behind having like an open world. Like not everything got to be open world. Like they, it, Nintendo already having a problem trying to make everything open world. Like you don't have to turn everything into an open world game. Mm-hmm. Like some of the most highly rated games are all linear experiences. Yeah, I think personally, I'm kind of down with the Tomb Raider example of like you have semi open world hubs that kind of branch off into linear uh, exploration. Uh, The bigger question for me is if Indiana Jones is going to be first person or third person. Because I feel like Indiana Jones needs to be third person so you can see Indiana, right? You can use the whip, but Machine Games history would point to it being first person, which... Oh, I mean, I think Xbox has a dearth of first-person games. So, like, to me, it's almost like, man, I, I, I hope Indiana Jones is third-person. Not because, like, I need it to be an Uncharted or Tomb Raider clone, just because I feel like that would best serve the type of game they're going for, rather than... I don't know, it would be odd to just be in first-person and having to use the whip. Unless they're going to split perspectives, like sometimes you're in first-person and sometimes you're in third I, that's th- what I'm really the most interested in is the uh, if it's first or third. I don't know. What, what would you guys? Third. What do you guys want? I, I, it has to be a third person action adventure game. Uh, I I can't have it any other way. Um, Games like that just work better in third person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I mean, what is it going to be like? A, a a Mirror's Edge in a wild? Like I don't. <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. It's I I don't. They would have to really sell me 
on this first. And I'm not against first person games. I mean, some of them I'm were done even. great, um, you know, when they're the focus isn't primarily shooting. Um, but I think it's just a, a better it, it, I think it, it's. I think third person games are just generally better. It's better for stories, better for world design. Uh, it's better for just getting the uh, pretty much the picture of everything like in one focus. Third person games. I, I just imagine playing to I'm about to say Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones, just a certain way. And I don't care. I mean, if it's a, another Uncharted or Tomb Raider, I, I just I just I want machines, um, machine games ability to produce high performing games, high frame rate games and their their graphical uh touch just in a third person action game. That's what I I'm I'm excited that Machine Games is doing it because I know what they can do. They can, you know, they 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 specialize in high frame rates, they specialize in high fidelity visuals. They just don't specialize in third person action games <laughs> cuz I've never seen a game outside of, you know, from Machine Games outside of like Wolfenstein and maybe I don't know if they yet I don't know what else games they've uh, they've done but Wolfenstein has been great. Um, the next uh, question comes from Jack Thomas or Jack West Thomas. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It says, "Hey gents, so I'm sure you've seen Cliffy B, a guy who created Gears One through Three, say that Marcus needs to die in Gear Six. Personally, I think he needs to either die or fully retire. I think." This stronger, I think this stronger cast has a lot going for it in this time. His time is done. What are your thoughts on this? Rand, do you think Marcus Phoenix should uh, be gone from the Garrett franchise? I mean, yeah, probably. And even depending on the choice you make, like even if JD's there, I could easily see a scenario in Gear 6 where, where Marcus sacrifices his life to make sure JD lives. And Kate take. lives and stuff, right? But then also with it's one of those scenarios it, where it's like I lost my son, but I'm not going to lose you, and he sacrifices himself. Yeah, but then the same scenario could be said if if JD's not there and Marcus just has nothing left to live for, and he just sacrifices himself because, right? So it's like in both scenarios, I could easily see Marcus dying. Yeah, and they probably should. You don't need to rely on Marcus anymore. Uh, but the question is. Here's the bigger question. Does the coalition have the balls to do it? Because I'm sure there would be some backlash. Killing off Marcus Phoenix? The staple of Gears? Yeah, they Maybe just, they're worried yeah. about people pushing back on that idea. You know, I don't know. The, I the, never know. The biggest thing that can happen is that they watch Naughty Dog tell Joel, uh, and they saw the reaction to that. If they can do that, and they were fine, the game still sold, you know, millions. The TV show was, you know... A success um they should be able to and we spent a lot more time with uh, all right gear story isn't like that deep it's not as impactful as like a last of us so they should be able to get away with it they managed to introduce a lot more characters in a respectable amount of time and uh to develop a backstory where our focus is a bit shifted so it can happen sure it'll you know, bother some of us or older cats, but come on, like the people that are will be playing Gears uh, six versus the people that was playing Gears one in in two thousand six. I mean, it is it's, it's a new generation of people. There's been there's it's a time where people weren't born when Gears one was out, which is strange to say. Um, I think they'll uh, I, I think they'll be fine. I don't think they should run away. Uh, or be afraid to do something like that because other games have done it at bigger moments that were costly. I don't think this will cost them a thing. They have they have a, a huge cast of characters and they've already ushered in the next generation of uh, Gears uh, protagonists here. And they have a you know a bigger world. They entry looking at Gears tactics and Pendolium Wars. They got so many other stories they could tell. Uh, so it's not too bad. I think. They should have killed him in the last game, to be honest with you. In Gears 4, right? Yeah. yeah no, I, in Gears 5, I think it should have been one of those things where Marcus sacrificed himself to save his son at the end instead of giving you a choice. And all of 5 is like redemption, like going after her for, for Marcus's death. 
I mean, all of six. Understood. Um, it's just like, to me, I do think they hold on to that a little too much. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, if all goes wrong, we don't, we'd we rather kill the main character than kill an old character. Like, to think about that. They'd rather kill one of the main characters than, than Marcus, an old character. Because yeah. at the end of five, they were going to kill, um, what's his name, too? Um, the dude that was in the robot, remember? They thought he died. Marcus thought he died. Uh, uh you Coltrane? talking about, no. Coltrane? Was it or, Coltrane or the, no, no. What's Coltrane? the dude that always dies in the, the Gear series? The the brothers, the, Car, the, the Carmine brothers or something like that? The, no, that it, was, family? it was Coltrane. He was in that thing and it ripped it in half and you thought he killed him. But then okay. he ended up coming, he ended up getting retrieved from the machine. He didn't die. Okay. It's like, why are you so open to killing the newer characters, but the older characters, like, you refuse to kill any of them? Hey, I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know. They should have they, they managed to do it with Dom. So I'm not sure why the I, old characters, though, if you really think about it, one of the reasons that people love the old characters is because, you know, they had good character, good charisma. They had good energy with each other. Mm -hmm. And at any moment, any of them could die. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. So another question comes from I'm saying this wrong. Graham, Graham or Graham, Graham Pitchers. He says, "Smooth. When can we see some game challenges, full playthroughs for some difficult games?" Uh, I yeah. What you haven't been doing those lately? Well, then I there have been a lot of hard games. Yeah. So, dude, I played through. I thought Wolong would be one of those games, but I ended up end up beating the game. <laughs> like, actually, it wasn't hard at all. Um. With the exception of like two bosses that I've truly, truly There's struggled like the with. The very, very first boss of the game, <laughs> boss of the game, yeah, yeah. and I think there was like another one later in the game that was yeah, Lubu. <laughs> um, I'm the thing is what people don't understand about those game challenges. I don't plan them. I don't try to do them. It's not that I. It's something I was trying to do to like profit or anything like that. Um, it, it depends if uh, no. It, it depends. I mean, I'm not I, I will do it. I they they typically happen like once a year, but I don't think anything polarizing has come out like, you no, know, obviously, I think Elden Ring was the last game to come out. But at that point, it was such a phenomenon that everybody just wanted to like experience. And like, I mean, I don't think um, everybody was playing Elden Ring versus watching other uh, people playing. And of course, it was getting a lot of views and stuff like that, but it was a different experience. But um, I don't know. Maybe when they finally release Bloodborne 2, <laughs> like, who knows? Or uh, oh, Liza P might be one to do if it's if it lives up to the hype. Maybe the 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 next uh, was it Lords of the Fallen? That's one that's coming that I can possibly do didn't like the first game so uh, i mean hopefully it's not a, a budget souls game as it was before so we'll see I, I i i want to you know i want to play games i want to stream but there hasn't been really a game that i haven't even considered like not a lot of these games i don't never wanted to do in the first place but i haven't seen a game that i feel like even is remotely worth me playing that i feel like would be that i would have fun playing at least at some point during those streams, I had I ended up finding some fun. Actually, the last one I did was Returnal, and I thought Returnal was garbage. Um, but uh, good question, Graham. Um, and I think that is it for the Patreon questions. So, shout out to everybody on the Patreon. Make sure you ask uh, your questions. Uh, BG will post them, I think, on uh, Thursday or Friday, and uh, we will answer them on Saturday. So uh, let's get to the uh, the showcase and the uh, predictions. Again, I have a list of uh, questions I'd like to ask to see you know where everybody's uh, leaning for the showcase uh, predictions and stuff like that, and we'll see uh, what happens. So Xbox Game Showcase predictions. We got Rand. Rand plays a major role. And uh, this today's podcast, because uh, historically we've paid a uh, play, I want to say paid a lot close attention to Rand's predictions videos, um, to see 
what's actually a prediction and what's actually a leak. So I tried to ask these questions to try to get something out of it. But um, so uh, yeah, you, you know, you always you always told me that I had a tell. <laughs> But you never would tell me what my tell is. Well, that obviously, because then you'd stop doing it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Apparently, I have a tell that I don't I don't know, though. So we can never tell him his tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first question for everyone, man. I, I'm just curious. What game opens the Xbox showcase this year? Attic, you want to you want to make your guess first? You're muted, Attic. No, no, I'm not muted. I'm gonna say Val. Oh, okay, okay. Solid Hel- choice. Val or Hellblade, one of those. Both solid choices. Like, I don't know. For this one, there is a, a few ways they could go, right? That I could see, because you could open up with Fable and just surprise the shit out of everybody. Yep. Like, oh man, Fable right away. But I guess the argument against Fable was is going to be that probably not going to be gameplay, and it's not going to have a year. So do you want to start off a showcase by showing off a game that doesn't have a tangible release date or even a tangible year? Maybe that sends a bad message, you know? The only way I see them opening with Fable is if they either have a new IP to close with, that's uh, a new unannounced IP, or if Hellblade 2's combat is so appealing that they end with that. Yeah. But then the other thing is... Hellblade 2 has a this year release date. Yeah, then, then Hellblade 2... It's like, all right, you start off the show with Hellblade 2, and actually, first thing you show is a game that has a solid release date, so you're starting off the showcase on the right foot with a game that looks amazing, gameplay, and is actually coming soon, or Avowed. I do think it's one of those three, where it's like, you have Avowed, we haven't seen it in a long time, I I do think Hellblade's releasing first, but I feel like if Avowed... I, I do feel like Avowed is a game that we don't really know. Right, we only saw CGI. Whereas, like, we know what Hellblade Two is going to look like. We may not know how improved it's going to be, but we know what it's going to look like. Whereas, Avowed, you're kind of just like, you don't really know. So, I, I sort of feel like Attic that Avowed is going to open up the show, and they'll probably just say it'll be gameplay, and it'll say 2024. They won't give like early 2024 or late 2024. It'll just say 2024, and that's that's how they'll open up the show. I think. All right, so, watch uh, us both uh, wrong and they do contraband. <laughs> contraband first? No, they wouldn't open with contraband. How, how I look at it is like, all right, I try to go back because I accurately predicted last year's uh, show as far as opening and closing. Um, if we go back to 2020, uh, they opened with Halo Infinite and they closed with Fable reveal. Yep. And 2021, they opened with Starfield and closed with Redfall reveal. Mm-hmm. Yep. In 2022, they opened with Redfall and closed with Starfield. Yeah. Um, and uh, pretty much the game that was well, technically Forza Horizon 5 closed it, but uh, that was the one more thing was Redfall. All right. So they typically open with the game, I guess, the, the one, I guess the bigger game that's coming first. Don't say that about Redfall. Well, all right, well in retro, I have to retroactively think about that. But uh, I think, I think, um, I believe, I believe they start off with a bang, and I think Red. Uh, not, <laughs> so I was about to say, Red, I think, I think Hellblade Two opens the show. It's a good choice. It'd be a good choice, especially if it is a release date, like coming this year. Where yeah. You could be like, boom, it's coming and it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good choice. Which leads into my next question, which is probably the same thing uh, to a lot of you guys. What closes the show? Ooh. Attic, you want to go first? Uh, this is a harder one because they could always throw like a compulsion game in here. If it, if it looks impressive enough, if a vault opens, Fable will close. Because mm. mm. I don't think I don't see them just doing a middle run on Fable. I don't know. Part of me thinks they won't do that. Well, first off, are you sure? Do you so you think Fable's there no matter what? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you and you think it's going to either open or close essentially. Maybe. Yeah. I, I I 
I just don't see them just doing a mid roll of that. Like I, I, you, I see you, that being. Are being you setting up? Are you setting role. yourself up for disappointment? I know how much Fable means to you. You know, you setting yourself I mean, if, up if for I'm disappointment. Wrong, wrong. But to me, Fable is one of their most anticipated titles for a lot of reasons, and, and and I just don't see them captivating off the end of the show with that. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could end do with Hellblade. Well, I mean, you could maybe end with Hellblade if it has a solid release date for this year and be like, oh, you can actually play it soon. Um, I personally think they're going to close with Fable. Uh, even though it kind of doesn't make the most sense because they already closed one show with Fable. So why would you close another show with Fable? Maybe they have more to show than we think. My question to you, Rand, about this whole Fable thing, right? And me and yeah. Attic was talking about this on the phone right when we would when they quote unquote tease fable or we think they tease fable with the glitter and the controller if fable's so far out why bother showing it anyway at all why does it have to have a presence here when you consider because... what's going on with activision you know we assume hellblade and evolves going to be a you know major part what what purpose does fable serve if it's not soon because Microsoft made a promise to gamers about here are these games that they re revealed in 2019 and 2020 that they haven't spoken about or updated any anything about in all this time. It's been three years, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're going to see hear anything from State of Decay 3 or Perfect Dark or Everwild. So you're taking three of those games at least and going four years, five years, well, four years in Everwild. Yeah. So four years without any sort of update whatsoever. That's really unheard of in this day and age. Um, Fable is also... Really. Yeah, Fable is also, I think, set to be one of Xbox's biggest games, period. That's coming out like in a relatively soon time frame of mm -hmm. two years, mm -hmm. right? And to sort of set that up as a big game, you, start, you need to start more or less getting it out there because, let's be honest... Uh, not that people even remember Fable anymore. When's the last time? When was the last Fable game, Attic? When was Fable Three? That had to be like 2011 uh, or 2012, maybe. Yeah, it was after I graduated. I mean, Fable Three released. Yeah, it's got to be like 2012, 2010. Uh, 2010. So 2010. So it's been yeah, it's been know, 13 years. 13 years, 15 years by the time I think Fable's yeah, coming in 20. So 15 years. You got to get that game out there. You 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 got to start hyping it up to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it's like what Matt Booty said last year, where he was like, every time he sees that game, he wants to show it. But Playground's like, no, we're not going to show it till we're ready. Maybe Playground's ready. So Maybe they're like, all right, let's do this. That right? brings my next question to you, because if they're ready, then... I don't... We already saw CGI. Do you think we mm -hmm. get like some sort of... You remember the first time we saw Horizon Zero Dawn for the first time, even though it was some years apart, we saw what at least appeared to be some sort of gameplay, whether it was a vertical slice or like, do you think we get something that looks like, at least it looks playable? Mm. It won't be CGI if it shows up. It'll be at minimum like in-engine type stuff. Um, maybe there's some slip it's a gameplay in there but i mean this is all assuming we all think fable's actually there and they're teasing fable i mm -hmm. personally think that it's that it's there um but i was thinking that even before the, the whole twitter thing you know i don't know if they're teasing fable i mean it looks like they're teasing fable uh they haven't said anything about tempering expectations they haven't mm -hmm. come out and said hey just want to let you guys know uh we hear you on Fable, but Fable's not going to be at the show. We don't want to, you know, we want you to, you know, keep your expectations in check. Playground's still work. Like, they see all this stuff on social media. They know everybody's thinking about Fable. They know all the websites wrote about Fable. They know Fable, mm -hmm. that people are expecting it. And they had their chances to downplay it. Greenberg's talk, you know, on Twitter yesterday talking about stuff. So he didn't say anything about it. Mm hmm. So that leads me to at least somewhat believe that Fable is there and they're happy with the hype that it's getting because they, they do think that, you know, know that Fable's at the showcase. 
Um, but I don't know if we'll see gameplay. I think it'll be in-engine stuff, uh, whatever that entails. Uh, but it won't be CGI, I don't think. Okay. Now, will there be a major third-party game added to Game Pass day one? And if so, from which publisher? Major third-party day and date release surprise. Uh, and, and if so, which publisher, if you had to pick, who might show up? Hmm. I the Third parties have seemingly moved away from Game Pass, haven't they? Doesn't it seem like that a little bit? Like the bigger third parties have have sort of. I'm trying to think. I mean, have it. I mean, I mean, you, okay, because they they get like high tier, you know, what double A or like you know, they get third party, but they're not like major. I think. Wo Long was the biggest so far this year, right? Yeah, I mean, Focus might Focus. You know, they did that with Tomic Cart and Plague's Tale, but to me, there was this like stretch in twenty when Outriders came out, where it was like Outriders, MLB, Back for Blood, uh, Back for Blood, where it was like, all right, Game Pass going to take that next step and start getting mm-hmm. more day one AAA, but that hasn't really manifested, and so I guess maybe if there's any. There's any company that would partner with Xbox? Maybe it's Sega. They seem to have a pretty good relationship. You know, maybe maybe like the 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 reveal, hey, Jet Set Radio's back. Maybe that could be a game where it's like Jet Set Radio's at the Xbox show and it's Game Pass Day One, something like that. Um, I don't know, Attic. What do you think? Um, I think they're getting to the point where they feel comfortable only with their games. You know, I do think they'll go for the occasional third party or, or you know, huge AAA party. But I think for the most part, they're just going to stick with theirs because, you know, it, it does look like the way Phil was talking in that kind of funny interview that they are close. They're about there on that that goal of like one game a quarter. And I think they're going to fill the, fill the rest in with the occasional third party big game and, you know, a bunch of indies and triple uh, double A stuff. All right. Um, I mean, I think, uh, oh man, I think, I think, I think Bandai Namco, the safe choice for them to bring uh, a new game day and date to the service that's probably coming out uh, this year. Um, and I think a, um, I, I, I believe you said Sega. I, I'm going out on a limb on this, and it may not be Game Pass, but I think we also talked about this. We probably talked about this in the podcast, but I'm going to say it in front of Rand. I think I think Xbox reveals a Persona game. Yeah, Persona 3 Remake seems like a thing that is going to happen. So, yeah, I'd agree with you. Cool, cool. They, they but is that the Persona you want? Do you, do you want Persona 6, though? I, I, there's rumors that Persona 6, the brand new one, is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. I, I, I'm, I'm adamantly against that idea. Um, uh, I think, sure, they can get Persona. I, what, I, and what I would like to happen is Xbox, you know, reveals Persona 3 remake, you know, announced that it's, you know, it's coming to Game Pass day one and also follow that trailer up with an announcement of Persona 6. Doesn't have to be any gameplay or anything, just have to be a title screen. And I mean, it doesn't have to even go into Game Pass, but it just has to go to Xbox the same day it releases on PlayStation. It's gotta be on their stage. Yeah. And if it does on their stage, I think I think that would be marvelous. Even, and I'm not even a Persona fan. I just think for the shits and giggles of it, I think that would be awesome. And to be fair, we also heard for like a year and a half to two that Metal Gear Solid 3 remake was gonna be a PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> Yeah, we all saw how that turned out. But, like, everybody, you're not the, like, the, I'm hearing a couple of rumblings about this whole Persona 6 thing and, and it being PlayStation exclusive. And I'm just trying to figure out, I just hope that Xbox got in touch with Sega early enough to prevent Persona 6 being some sort of PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, I mean, I guess only time will tell on that one. All right, so... The next question, oh, well, we sort of answered this question because there, there's, ever since that thing, so we're all in agreement that 
Fable will be at the showcase. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Likely or not, <laughs> Xbox adds Xbox Series S's to Xbox Design Labs, or they introduce multicolor Xbox Series S's to sell this holiday. Not, not likely. Not likely. Okay. Add a, you? That would be crazy if they did, though. That not yeah. likely, though. That not likely. I think they got an opportunity there to do that. I think that would be cool to try to, like, uh, get Yeah, I think that would drive up the cost to the console. And that's All the they do is change the different colors. <laughs> well, you, you think it just turns colors for free? Like, you think there's nothing that takes goes into account to make just something a different color? Like, well, I mean, take the one gen production, dip it in red paint, pink paint, green paint, and black. All right. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Um, another one. Um, Xbox shows contraband gameplay. Likely or not? Not likely. It's been specifically contraband gameplay. Yeah. See, they could show contraband CGI. They already did, or does that not did count? Did they though? Did because they, it was, uh, oh, wasn't yeah. that more like a logo reveal yeah, though? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, all right, I'll just say just for the sake, likely, I guess. Okay. Stalker Two gets a December release date. Likely or not? Not, not likely. Not likely. Oh. At least not at the show. Uh, does, They're dealing with a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. So is it? Do you? So is, do you think it's still like not this year? Yeah, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say that probably a 2024 game. Yikes. Um. Okay. Likely or not, this one's probably. I think I've heard you a couple times on this rant. Hellblade two this year. Uh, well, Jazz would say likely. I'm going to say not likely. I'm going to say likely. I'm okay. staying on my square. I hope, I hope Addict's right. I do. I got Hellblade is likely. As a matter of fact, I'll do you one better. I think I did a video where I even gave a release date. I got... Ooh. Give a release date. I had a hit, yeah. hit actually smooth has been uh, accurate with some of these release dates. What's, yeah. what's the release date? Give me, give me the release yeah, date. Yeah, man, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it takes November 10th, the anniversary. November 10th. Yeah, Friday, November 10th, the anniversary of the Xbox Series X. Released in the same day as the new Call of Duty. Okay, it's a bold uh, strategy. You, you, know, you think Call of Duty is, is it confirmed is releasing November 10th? I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure that's what Tom Henderson reported. Yeah. Is it? I think. It might be November 3rd. It might be the last week of October. I'm, let me look. I'm pretty sure Tom Henderson's reported the date of Tom Henderson Call of Duty 2023 release date. So I'm pretty sure he had that pegged as November 10th. Let's see. I. So I think Hellblade 2 releases yes, in, November in time. Uh, no, I think it releases November before 18th. the game of the year. Call of Duty, he says Call of Duty 2023 will release on November 10th. All right, if so. that's the case, then Hellblade 2 releases on the 27th of October. Oh, okay. All right. I think it. I think it's. I think it's going to be one of those uh, uh, shoe ins that shocks everybody and, and, and takes like one of those game of the year contenders. If it's, I mean. I'm I'm all behind you on this one. I would love to play Hellblade two this this fall. That would be amazing. You could you could oh my like Xbox coming at you with Starfield in September. Forza probably October, and then a Hellblade in like late October, early November. Whew. That's a pretty good pretty good end of the year. Yeah. Uh, likely or not, Double Fine shows up. Double Yo. Fine. I think I said on the Xbox Two that there's likely one of them shows up, maybe one of their games. Yeah, because I feel like they work on like ten at a time. So I think they're I think they're work I think they paused two games to fin oh, to finish up Psychonauts two, so they probably went back to those two games. The so. reason why Double Fine is in my head is because they did this tweet. I don't know if you remember this, Rand. Yes, I saw it. Yeah, with the Game Pass, they show all their games on Game Pass, right? And there's two question marks in boxes. What is that? Like I'm like I'm trying to think what game did they make that's not in Game Pass or are they referring to games that they have to announce that they're gonna 
Psychonauts. And then there was another tweet from Xbox that had it was like a box of like it was like six boxes in the box, and it was like P S I, yep, C H, yeah. and then it was like X X X. What am I? I mean, I know we're probably too early for a Psychonauts three announcement. Maybe a Psychonaut one remake since the other one is fairly dated. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just curious. I, I I do hope to see, you know, Double Fine. But uh, I'm going to go with a likely. You don't make those two tweets, for uh, one from Xbox and then one from, I think, uh, Double Fine Twitter page and, and didn't come out with nothing. Uh, so I think Double Fine uh, shows up to some degree. Um, likely or not. And I, we talked about this. Does Indiana Jones show up? And is it exclusive? Not likely. Uh, I will say likely, not likely. Likely it shows oh, up, not likely middle. it's exclusive. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I can, I can, I can I see that. I think it would show up. I just don't think it'll be an exclusive. Okay. Um, it's another question here. Uh, we know that you know, obviously, Starfield won't be formally, you know, a part of this a showcase. They'll have, you know, the showcase immediately after totally focused around um, Starfield. But what could there be any other Bethesda studio that shows up during this showcase? And with what? I mean, you know, you could always have the usual Pete Hines. Hey, guys, here's Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Online updates, right? Uh, do you think Machine Games has been working on was working on something before Indiana Jones? I think they were working on Wolfenstein, but I think they put Wolfenstein on hold to do Indiana Jones. I know there's a lot of people that think we might get a Wolfenstein 3 announcement this year and the game might actually come out this year. I mean, that would be really be cool, crazy, but I doubt it. Uh, but I don't think so. So yeah, I've heard nothing about Wolfenstein. Yeah, I'm going to say, I mean, there's a chance none of Bethesda Studios show up and it's just the Starfield Direct because, I mean, they just released Hi-Fi Rush, which, you know, you saw the leaked achievements. So maybe Tango Gameworks is there with the shadow drop of a Hi-Fi Rush expansion. I think the right? show for Redfall expansion. <laughs> no, they ain't going to mention. I don't think that. They would be dumb to even breathe, utter the word Redfall during this conference. <laughs> like, imagine, hey, guys, you can finally play it at 60 frames. Go ahead. I don't think we see ID's game. I don't think we see ZeniMax Online's game yet. Um, it'd be cool if we did. I I would love to see what ID's working on. So th there's a chance we, we see nothing from Bethesda. I'm just going to stick to Indiana Jones, though, and that's it. Just machine games showing up. and wow. And, like... And the Hi-Fi Rush expansion, I guess, maybe. All right. Don't read this into existence. It's not going to be Please. right. Well, I'm saying I'm saying Dishonored 3 shows up. Oh, who's making Dishonored 3? Which which Arcane team? Arcane Leon. Oh, you don't think they're doing a uh, Deathloop 2? Yeah, because no, Deathloop, the, guy, the actors from Deathloop have been like, they've been very talkative, man. Yeah, uh, but they also confirmed that Deathloop and Dishonor are in the same universe. That is true. So could it be a Deathloop Dishonored crossover? Mm-hmm. Once That'd a few. Be... They showed a trailer, just a CGI of Corvo and Colt working together. Okay. Uh, all right, I'd be down for that. That you can have my you can have my knees if that's the case, Attic. How's that? <laughs> I know I'm not getting no one's knees for that, but I'm, I'm gonna throw that in the in the ether. <laughs> all right um uh i i've kind of just i've kind of said this but this is this if you guys agree with me or not but this is like a likely not likely xbox gets a persona reveal likely oh oh okay all right true or false oh my god <laughs> the, it, true, I mean, is, I true is, <laughs> is true or first likely unlikely is not the same thing, uh, essentially kind of? right this showcase will be centered around these four games. Hellblade 2, Avowed, Fable, and Forza. True. True, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is uh, that what you want? Is that what you want to hear? Is that do you like that if it is? I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, here's the thing, right? I've been looking at that image so much 
that I had to look <laughs> back at the other showcases and show and saw and, and to see how the other games revealed. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and Rand, you probably figured this out. Remember when the Xbox Series X was first revealed, right? Mm-hmm. At the Game Awards. And they, we yep. didn't know what the hell was going on. They kept showing these different images and whatnot. Uh, and we saw, like, remember we saw, like, uh, sand and rocks and stuff like that? Um, mm-hmm. That was actually a snippet of Hellblade. And um, mm-hmm. when when they pan the ground, we also got a snippet of Forza Horizon. And it, it, it was all the stuff that were, like, I guess, like, that were later announcements was in that trailer. And I was like, now I get it. Okay. So this time, right, I'm looking at the... There was another image that had like the, the similar images that was in Hellblade and there similar images that was in Avowed. If you look at the colors of this uh, showcase in the um, in the mist, it's it's a combination of Avowed for sure. The Avowed, uh, I think the whole thing, the whole missing is Avowed. Um, that first showcase when after the whole Bethesda was done, they remember they had like obviously the Halo characters, and they had the tire that was obviously going to be a Forza game, and then they had the star, the, the the space behind it that was obviously Starfield, and those were the three pillars of the showcase. I'm like, this year, they the original image that they had that Aaron Greenberg was using as a default pick, which since went into the uh, freaking. So uh, went into the oblivion. I don't know what they did with the image, but it was literally the Hellblade um, logos around a ring. And then there was arrows in it. It was the same arrows that matched the arrows uh, that was in Avowed. So that's what makes me think uh, the the focus here is going to be obviously Hellblade and Avowed. And I think with the fable is going to be a big part of it and then of course forza since it has to come out you know this well, and year starfield and Starfield. it's starfield but being that yeah yeah this starfield for sure is going to be the biggest thing um for sure um but as far as like um xbox's first i guess the their internal studios what do, what what's the, the sub name for them the the non bethesda studios is it i thought i heard somebody uh call them something else but like the internal studios uh next uh, did i say that? all right but well, i guess this is still technically likely or not like the true or false doesn't work in this case uh <laughs> xbox and bethesda to reveal a starfield theme xbox series x or series s console uh like about the show or the, the, their the, show either show it's, it's either show they could do it hmm see the thing is i do th- all right i don't think there's a custom xbox series x starfield console i do think it'll be bundled just like diablo's bundled right now and just like forza horizon 5 is bundled right now and I don't, but I don't think they'll announce it because you can't get it until September. So I would say unlikely. Okay. What about you, Addict? Mm. Unlikely. I, I don't think they're going to do it. Right. I think you will get your Starfield controller and headset, though. Yeah, and those that's, are those are pretty, pretty much, much a, le- a given. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to get that? Are you are you, are you are you liking that Starfield controller? I like the Starfield controller. I think it was masterfully done. Um, I might even get the headset. Too, um, depending on how that looks, um, I think they have an opportunity to do. I think they should do a console. They did one for Halo Infinite. They got to do. It would be nice to see them do a console to get back into the console thing, man. Um, okay, another one. Likely, not likely. Activision Blizzard will show at least one game at the showcase. <sighs> okay, so that's. Would be either what Overwatch Two or Diablo Four. I'm gonna say likely. Which I, I one? They, I don't know what it would be. It, it might even be something that they've been working on, like maybe a Crash Bandicoot or something like that. I think they might just do something just to give a little context behind, you know, the the deal. Like I think, kind of like you know how you saw like what when the Bethesda deal was officially confirmed, but it wasn't signed. 
as a faith, they put Doom Eternal in game back in Game Pass. Remember that? No, they put the other Doom back in Game Pass. Like, I feel like you might see something like that where it's like Microsoft is so confident that they get like they reach an agreement to to at least reveal something. It won't have a platform that it's going to be on, but it'll reveal a game. Yeah, like their new survival game. Yeah, something. I, don't uh, know. I think that'll be revealed at BlizzCon. I get. See, I mean, like, it's possible Diablo's there again simply to be like, hey, Diablo's out, go get it. You know, one of those type of things because it only had been, been a few days. And there is Crash Team Rumble that's coming out later in June. And I don't know who has the marketing for that, if anybody. I guess that's possible Crash Team Rumble shows up at the Xbox show. Just to, as like, hey, here's Crash Team Rumble. So initially, I was thinking unlikely, but I just remembered Crash Team Rumble exists, and now I'm leaning more towards likely. And if it is, it'll be that game that shows up. If it doesn't show up, then nothing shows up, I think. Yeah, it'll be something small. It won't be anything big. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, And you guys pretty much answered this one as well, I think because of the Patreon questions, but... Uh, Gears of War, not saying which one will be at the show. True or false? Oh, uh, maybe the Ultimate Collection. I say, I want to say likely, but then part of me feels like may, maybe they'll do something different. I'm gonna say likely. I think there's yeah. a chance. I think there's a chance, but the only way the Gears Collection shows up this year is if it's launching this year. Okay, That's and I don't think it's launching this year. I think it's a next year thing. I think it's a 2024 thing. So I'm going to say unlikely. But there is a there is a chance. I mean, if we see it, if we do see Gears Collection, it'll probably come with launching in November or something, right? Uh cuz it cuz it if it's next year, there's no reason to to announce it now. You know, you don't need to announce a collection a year in advance. So I'm going to say next year so unlikely. Okay. This is uh uh, a question. Then this is obviously outside of the things we mentioned before. But who won't we see at this uh, that you think people are expecting to see, but you feel we won't see at the showcase? Interesting. Uh, who won't we see? Uh, yeah, we won't see the initiative, which sucks because I want to see. That hurt my heart. That would hurt my feelings really bad. Yeah, we won't yeah. see the initiative. I don't think we'll see Undead Labs. Um, I would say we wouldn't see Rare, but I do think we'll see Sea of Thieves, though. Right, Season 10. I would say we wouldn't see 343, but I do think we'll see a Halo Season 4 trailer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, because I feel like the game is starting to have a, like, a little bit of a, a comeback, and I think they might need to give it that stage just to... Just to show people, you know, Forge is lit. And hopefully maybe something story related. I doubt it, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe some people are expecting in Exile to show off one of their titles. Yeah, I don't think we'll see them. <laughs> yeah. So maybe maybe, maybe it's that. But, yeah, it'd be an initiative would be the big one, I uh, think. Oh, man, that, yeah. And it, it's software on the Bethesda side, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, um, I say we won't see. Um, I don't think we see Zenimax online. I don't think we see an exile, and I don't believe we'll see. I don't even think we'll see compulsion for another year. Really, no yeah. compulsion, huh? I don't think we see compulsion. Um, hmm, that's interesting to me because, as I'm sure you might know, they they just hired a community manager. They did. Wait, wait. Did they hire or did they post a job? Pretty sure they just hired. They, they just hired somebody for a community manager position. Okay. Now, why would you be hiring somebody for a community manager position when you don't have a game announced? Unless you're about to announce your game and you need someone to manage your community. No, I that, don't know. That uh, that's actually fair. You actually did say that in a podcast. I don't know why. Um. That uh, okay. That makes sense. I mean, right, Attic? I mean, like, yeah, if, if you're I, not I, announcing anything, why do you need to hire a community manager? 
you could sire it one later. I I don't know. Yeah. Plus, it's they could easily announce with, announce it with the CGI trailer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to come out anytime soon. It could be two years away for all we know. But I mean, they could easily announce it with uh with CGI trailer and uh, I think the the Twitter account has their Twitter account hasn't even tweeted since October of last year. But I mean, they don't need to because there's nothing to to manage. But if you're about to announce your brand new game, then yeah, you probably need tweets ready. You probably need like a whole plan. So you would need to hire somebody. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So, try to predict the biggest surprise. Fable. <laughs> well, I mean, is that a surprise? It's already announced. Not anymore, I suppose. Not anymore. Xbox. Yeah, Xbox I, I don't ruined it. And why they did that? Like, I don't understand why they showed that. No, but like, if you think about it, it, it was already announced two years ago. So we know it's like, I don't think even it, sure it'll surprise us to, to see a formula, but it's not a surprise because it's they've already surprised us announcing it's it's that it was releasing it two years ago. I mean, you, so it's you think it's not a surprise? I feel like it's an expectation to at least I, I, like, wow, yeah, I'm surprised. But I don't think that's like, oh, my God, I'm so surprised. Like, we're learning a fable for the first time because they already did that to us. It's almost an expectation. Now I expect to see it this year. I expect to see it next year. Yeah. Okay. No. Biggest surprise. Um, hmm. I got one. Okay. Just in case. Just. This game gets its formal reveal at the showcase. I'm going to say GTA 6. Whoa, then that would be a surprise. And <laughs> I, it, 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 this would be, I feel like, the biggest surprise for me if it happens. But the CEO of Take Two and Phil Spencer have been really close. I'm not saying he'll put the game in Game Pass or anything like that, but he, support, he su- has supported Xbox and obviously he supports the activity. He comes out and in, in, in defense, you know. All the time, we know GTA 6 already, like, you know, leaked to some degree. So we know it's in some sort of showable form. We know is it, um, it's, you know, probably too early to show, like, gameplay. But I think they can do Xbox that favor. And I think that would be, there's, I'm going to predict that the biggest surprise that happens at the Xbox showcase is going to be GTA 6 uh, formal reveal on that showcase. I mean, you that would be a huge surprise because everybody thought, well, a lot of people thought it would be at the PlayStation show, right? Yeah, it was a, you know? thought a lot of things would be at the PlayStation show. Yeah, that's just true. <laughs> uh, all right, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have a tough time thinking of a surprise of that magnitude. Uh, Attic, do you, do you have anything in, in mind for a surprise like that? Oh, okay, I got one. I got one. You're muted, Attic, but go. I think the biggest I, surprise we might get is like a Persona 6 on the stage. Yeah, but if we're going pie in the sky mm-hmm. things like smooth is with GTA 6, I'll, 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 I got one. Let me say it um, I mean, my pie in the sky things like Splinter Cell, but I said that on Xbox 2, mm-hmm. and I'll always say that until Splinter Cell shows up. <laughs> but how about how about Phil is joined at the end by Doug Bowser? <laughs> the and they, uh, they, they announce... Uh, Game Pass is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Okay. Uh, you know, like, so the Xbox and Nintendo partnership is real kind of thing, you know? Okay. That's fair. That, that, now, I'm trying to see how beneficial that would be to the Xbox audience. Hey, if you got a Switch, you can play your Xbox games on the go. Matter of fact, if, all right, here's the thing. I, 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 like, the one thing, all right, there's there's two devices out, right, that I really wanted to take my Xbox on the go, right? It's the ROG Ally, mm-hmm. and there's that other, that with the G Cloud, right? G Cloud for streaming, the ROG Ally for just like that portable native PC, right? If Xbox come to Nintendo, Xbox Game Pass comes to the Nintendo Switch, I will... I will rebuy myself because I won't use my kids. I will rebuy myself a Nintendo Switch OLED and, mm. and, and truly use that as my 
X, uh, Xbox on the go. I would do that. I would oh, I would buy that over the raw ally, buy, buy that over the G Cloud and stuff like that and, and, and be satisfied. So, uh, but yeah, that, that would be a, a surprise. Addict, did you come up with a new one? You muted still? Huh? <laughs> um, that's a, that's all I can really think of. I just don't know what's realistic on what's going on right now. Uh, since we know Splinter Cell, that that might actually be a possibility. I mean, I hope it is. Yeah, one of these years. If if, if Splinter Cell is gonna get you know revived or remade, I think the the most appropriate place to do it is at an Xbox uh stage. They already brought back Metal Gear at a PlayStation stage, and um. And, and, and you know, I, I I don't feel the same about Remedy uh, like I used to, but you know they brought back Alan Wake, and they did Control, and Alan Wake remake uh, remaster at a PlayStation showcase. It's like they want to show like, hey, you know, we're, we're buddy buddy hmm. with these guys. I think Ubisoft. Oh, I got another surprise. Go ahead, Rand. All right, and maybe maybe Attic can use this one as his. Rise two. Ah, that would be, big. That would be really big. Uh, I, I, it would be big to the core to the 2013. Not saying it's exclusive or anything, but, but it, you know, there's been rumors that maybe they're making one. You know, mm-hmm. so that would be big. That that would be big. That I think that would be uh, really big. All right. So, um, as far as uh questions for the showcase, that's uh pretty much. What I have, I don't know if you guys have any other things. I got, uh, I got one for, I got a likely unlikely for you guys. Okay. Okay. And this isn't necessarily to do with the showcase, but just in general. Got it. I'm ready. Will the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition, will Microsoft close the deal? Oh, oh, that was before, the, oh, before the, uh, the end of their uh, uh the the terms are up so before like july 17th or i guess before uh they said it would be closed because they said it would be closed before uh june 30th mm-hmm. how um, likely or unlikely do you think so they close the deal without what i guess maybe even better sense how likely or unlikely do you think they close the deal without the cma um i'm gonna tell you this they got into what the 18th to close the deal um Take this for however you think it is. I think Xbox closed the deal the week between uh, the 12th and the 16th of June. So next, uh, oh. after the showcase, they close the deal. So you think it's likely? I think Attic, it's likely. You, mm-hmm. think? you know what? I- I'm going to come out and say this. They announce a bunch of games from from Activision going in Game Pass. Oh, Interesting. Maybe not the Call of Duties, but like a lot of the little nicks and knacks that they can legally get away with doing. Okay, that'd be an interesting announcement. You know, they're closing this deal the week between the 12th and the 16th. It's closing right after that showcase. After This is what's going to happen. I'm sorry, Rand. I'm, 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 on, I'm on fire. Okay. So right. Xbox is going to have an awesome showcase. It's going to be it's going to it's going to be a much as please don't let the kids move curse. Work you got to be careful right. about the kids move curse you said i remember you said something about 2023 was going to be the year for xbox and then bg dm'd me or something Dude. he was like he just ruined it <laughs> and i was like i was like I, I don't know i mean like hi-fi rush came out real good i'm like maybe the kids smooth I, curse is broken say, the next week is either, fall happened, so. i think next week is either going to be the best week for xbox or the worst week for xbox i think oh, damn. i think xbox has a killer showcase they're going to be riding on that high. Starfield's going to show up great uh, at 60 FPS. Um, Ooh, so you think that's likely? I think huh? that's okay. likely. Um, I think Forza is going to show up great, and they're going to prove again that they got the game running in-game 4K60 with ray tracing that Digital Foundry will confirm within 24 to 48 hours after it's shown. Um, and that within days... Xbox will announce its close uh, uh, that is closing the uh, deal with Activision. I'm not sure how that impacts the FCC, but I think what I, what I truly think is going to happen is I think before or at their ca- case management hearing on the 12th is when the CMA bends the knee and agrees to a settlement. 
so they don't make it to the July hearing because if they make it to the July hearing, it's gonna it's gonna be bad for the uh, CMA. So they're going to they won't see the July hearing. They're gonna come to an agreement then, um, and they're gonna come to an agreement. But I think either way, uh, whether they come to agreement on the twelfth um, that we um, at that meeting or Xbox, if they don't come to an agreement at that meeting, Xbox closes the deal without the CMA. I have no idea what's going to happen. None. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just... Uh, what if this goes on for another year, Smooth? If it... I mean, honestly, after this whole... Here, I got enough. So, the good thing is the Xbox Game Showcase is, uh, is going on. So, that's going to be serve as a nice distraction and a nice content point where we get to have all this content to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. So, that's going to serve as something. The next day, you know, we're going to hear a lot from boss and post up you got just to give you a heads up 24 hours after the showcase is the second case management thing so is it, it, it there, we're still going to hear about it i think i literally have probably one month of this left in me because i'm i'm riding on this thing closing this month if it okay. doesn't i don't really got like i'm not really following it because i don't really care about like uh you know, once you get to the FTC, people aren't gonna like what I'm gonna have to say. I'm gonna be talking a whole bunch of shit about you know, our administration and all this other stuff. People, like, you know, mistake me for a racist again. Like I don't know. Um, I wanted to say something really bad, um, it's, but just, since this is long, locked continue. behind a paywall, I could actually get away with saying this. Uh, no, you don't right. need to say that. All right, I won't say. I won't say. Maybe I'll tweet it after a while. But okay, you don't even have to tweet. <laughs> just keep it moving. All right. <laughs> All right, so Attic, do you got any like predictions that we you didn't get to discuss that you would like to say on the the show? No, nah, I think my biggest like mic to drop moment would just be, you know, actually the biggest biggest mic to drop moment is they buy <laughs> drop the mic. I know that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, drop the mic moment. I just want like more of a focus, you know them announcing they bought a studio or made a studio that makes Japanese uh, games. Maybe they announce a Lost Odyssey remake or something of that core. Just something like that. That's all I want. Yeah. I think it's unlikely for them to do acquisitions with ABK yeah, going yeah, on. But definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to the show. Yeah. Then I was looking forward to the PlayStation 1 too. Yeah. And well, you know, we all know how that one turned out. Oh, yeah. Um, so that showcase people you know try to pretend things didn't happen but all i saw on the internet you know 24 hours hours before the showcase was people telling us or me how bad we're going to feel after this place to showcase over like we got to get ready to sell our xboxes oh i'm just looking to see how bad oh my god Uh oh get ready get ready and and i was like you know what i actually bought into it for a little bit and i'm like all right you know i'm gonna look forward to the show to see what games is coming on xbox that i might enjoy you know because they always try to announce these third-party games as exclusives and and some of them may look hot you know what i mean and when that showcase uh, so when, when it opened, it, it opened very, uh, oh my God, it opened with, uh, with their, their, I was about to call it contraband, their heist game. Uh, and it was CGI. I'm like, oh, this is very un PlayStation like, okay, whatever. And then the next person you see is Jim Ryan. No, okay. All right. He's about to get us into the meat and potatoes. Uh, I, I think they had a really one highlight moment for me, and it was that game that uh, was it the uh, was it that Phantom Blade was probably the yeah. only thing that I was like, okay, this looks like we could be something. Everything else, once I saw the games that started looking like Abzu, I was like, yeah, this show is trash. It's gonna be trash for the rest of it because once those games start making its way to the showcase at PlayStation, that means there's no. It, that's an hour long. I'm like, oh. You only got really time for. I'm waiting. I was like, okay, Metal Gear and Spider Man. Like, I mean, you got to show Last of Us at some point. You know what I mean? And once I was, I was looking at the time, and I'm like, okay, Jim Ryan comes back up. He shows Gran Turismo, and he announced the little streaming thing, and I'm like, oh, 
they're closing with Spider-Man after this. Yeah, this show is bad. Um, Spider-Man obviously looks good, but Spider-Man can't surprise you. We knew we we saw it a couple years ago. We we played what three of those games in the last couple of years. So it really sure we all we can confirm is that it looks good, like the new suit and the new villains. But we know what we're getting there. There was nothing from that showcase that made me feel like, oh my god, like I, I PlayStation got some gems. Um, I'm actually don't know what I'm getting from PlayStation beyond Spider Man. I, and yeah. and I'm not going to complain like uh, PlayStation I, ain't got no I games or anything like that, but that it's just the truth. I don't know what their roadmap looks like. So if we keep going down this this <laughs> this rabbit hole, the whole comment section is just going to be arguing with your opinions and completely overlook the entire prediction part. No worry, I'm just not going to talk gonna... about your comments on the. Curve. All right, I got one final score. All right, this is this is pre. All right, this is prediction. At the end of the day. None of us has seen the show. We really, truly don't know what's going to be there. Based off what your predictions are and what you truly think is going to be there, what do you think you would be scoring this showcase after it wraps? Attic, what do you think your ultimate score is going to be for the showcase? Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. He's he's keeping it low. He's there too, you know, and it's. He's, that always that's gonna inflate it a bit too. So in reality, he's saying it's seven. That's so. true. That's true. Because in 2017, I forgot what I gave the Xbox showcase. I wasn't truly happy with it, but I was happy that I was there. And obviously, the Xbox One X and stuff. But if I think I, I would have watched it, I, it would have uh, been the anything, lower score. It, if you talk about like the experience of being there with friends watching it live. It's a nine out of ten, but you being realistic, I'm expecting an eight out of ten because I know they're going to show mm. some games I'm not interested in. It's sure. just how much are they going to go hard on that, and mm-hmm. how much they're not. And I'm combining the two, that and Starfield. So it's not just about what they show me at that thing; it's about what Starfield looks like as well. I'll say like eight and a half, nine, maybe nine. I don't know. We'll see. You know. I thought last year's could have been good, so they did the twelve month thing. Yeah, they kind of like more yeah. look back on it and what happened. It keeps on falling further in my estimate estimation. Yep. I think it'll be as good as twenty twenty one, and I actually think it'll be better than twenty twenty one. And I think a lot of people look at twenty twenty one and they're like, "Yeah, that was a good show. That was a yeah. really good show." So that's that's kind of like in my eyes, it's like it's gonna it'll be as good as twenty twenty one. But probably better because there'll be more gameplay stuff mm-hmm. than 2021 had. So that's that's kind of the bar for me. Okay. Um, you know what's crazy? My expect I have high expectations, but my anticipation isn't as been high as it was previous years, right? I um, and I think it's just we've been doing this so long. Yeah, so, and we. I, I'm hyped. That I, I'm good. At, like it's there. I always get hype around this time of the year. But I will say, like, the hypeness I have now and the hypeness I had five years ago is completely two different things. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm gonna say I don't think Xbox can mess this up, considering. Um, no, this is Xbox. They can mess it up. They so. can. They can mess it up. I, all right, I'll say this. Like, I don't Chris, think they will. Like I, I don't, Shut your mouth. I don't think they will. And what I'm going to say is. I think they're going to uh, land a uh, a nine out of ten to a nine. I'm probably going to grade it nine nine and a half. Think they're going to have the best showcase overall throughout the year. Um, and um, they don't really. I mean, they don't really have to do much to do it, but I want them to. I want them to do much. If Fable's going to show up at this damn show and it doesn't need to be, I'm fine with the pillars. Of, if, if we're going to see Hellblade 2 gameplay, Avowed gameplay, get a release date for Hellblade 2, get a release window for Avowed, and Fable's going to show up in some sort of vertical slice, and Force of Motorsport is going to show up well with an, an, a proper release date, and then we're going to get our Starfield Gloriness uh, with its uh, se- reconfirmation of a September 6th release date, and they're going to open pre orders uh, this Sunday for it, uh, that Sunday for it. Everything else is just going to be a bonus. So, yeah, nine, nine out of ten for sure. It, it, see, the thing is, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually do it this year, you know, and 
we actually finally get to see the Xbox that we believe that they could have been this entire time. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I really am. It's just to a point, I remember me in like 2019. Well, eight, no, 19. Was that the last E3? Because uh, I'm talking about the last E3. Yeah, last mm-hmm. E3 is 2019. Yeah, and I remember everyone and everyone's mom telling me Fable going to be there. And I got my, my hopes all excited. And then guess what wasn't there? Fable. So, yeah, it turns, but it was the it, next year, though. Yeah, it, yeah it's like I, I'm at the point where I do think it's going to be a good show, but I'm not going to let my excitement for the show ruin the show for me. I have a I have a likely not un, unlikely question. What's up? Do you think there will be a movie or TV show trailer? If there was, there's not anymore. <laughs> so no, uh, no, no Fallout TV show trailer, no Gears movie announcement. They show me that Halo season two, Halo season, season two trailer. No, we riot. We riot at dawn. No, so, I so think you, I think that shows up in uh, Rand. Can you confirm? Are they doing the, an extended showcase again or no? Yeah, they are Tuesday. Yeah. The Tuesday. If they are, then they, I think if any, if they're going to do that, I think Fallout show uh, shows up there. The Fallout show, because you know, you never know. We didn't think Sony would do Gran Turismo, and I and I believe the Fallout TV show wrapped in March could easily have the fallout tv show here yeah didn't they show the halo of- where did they show the halo show at i know they showed it at some sort of was it the 20th anniversary thing i don't remember where did we first see the halo like trailer i feel like they showed it at um was it at a gaming showcase or was it at the xbox 20th anniversary event they did at the end of the year uh i don't know to maybe la- it was could it be one of the keely events maybe mm. I don't know. Okay, but I just had to bring that up because you know, movie yeah. movies and TV show trailers seem to be a thing these and days. I don't, I don't think they're going to do it at their game showcase. Um, and if they, uh, if they did, if you're sitting there and watching it, and it, here's a trailer for Fallout TV show that leads into the announcement of the Fallout next gen version, how are you going to feel? Like, how would you feel? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, you know what? Does Fallout show up? At the showcase, oh, just, yeah. uh, no, man, because they owe us the next gen version of Fallout Four. Yeah, that's supposed to be coming out actually this month. Is that like a self drop? I mean, I've always thought they were just going to release it around the time the TV show, so people could have a Fallout game to play. I mean, it's possible. Uh, Je- I think Jez's prediction was Fallout the uh, current gen or next gen update would be a shadow drop at the show that it would they'd run a trailer for it and be like available now. Yeah, type thing. Okay, that. That'd be good. That'd be good. That'll probably get me into. I think I'm stuck. I think I'm currently stuck in the area of Fallout uh, Four that I've been struggling to uh, get by. So I've been meaning to go back and like play all the expansions and stuff, but I just haven't had the opportunity. I love Fallout. I just I I see Fallout Four like I saw like the the recent Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. and Tears of the Kingdom. They're great games, but they're not they're not Fallout and Zelda games to me. Another question: What's the likelihood that Xbox, at some point during their, you know, presentation, because when they, you know, obviously, you like, you know, they they give you a thing of games from the, you know, Game Pass and stuff like that. They will have those little breaks where people are saying that. Do they give us a uh, uh, update on Game Pass subscribers uh, at, of any form uh, at this event? No. 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 Unlikely. Unlikely. The next time we hear Game Pass subscriber updates is when they close ABK. Okay. No, uh, nope. That's smart. That, that that makes sense. That actually makes sense. Okay. Okay then. Um. Well, Attic. I don't know how. You know what's crazy? Go ahead. If they haven't said the the subscriber count this whole time because they didn't want to make the 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 membership seem too strong and it said they're actually like 40 50 million this whole time <laughs> well i mean but the internal documents that they are be forced to submit over would reveal you know what where they're true well, talk about the perception oh okay yeah yeah because regardless how the the people that matter have the information mm-hmm. you know how you know you know how these twitter warriors do mm-hmm. look at this it's 40 yeah. million why are you letting them do this like, yeah and, I, think, I think at best it's probably 30 million I don't think it's really grown too dramatically since they announced ABK last year mm-hmm. because there really hasn't been a lot of big time game releases. Yeah, twenty twenty two was into very the service. Poor. Yeah, it was very very poor. So, yeah. I would say I at most it's around thirty million. 
Okay. Maybe lucky 35 to be at is like the 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 max. Thirty five million yeah. is like the max. They probably they probably when they were looking at this years ago, they probably thought they'd be higher. Yeah. But game releases have take taken time. I mean, Starfield and Redfall was supposed to be out last year. Yep. And then Redfall Redfall ended up being a disaster. You know, Starfield's so good enough too. It, it it could it could generate some by itself. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be good. You know, it's got to be really good. And Forza and Hellblade this All year right. maybe. You know, so. All right, smooth. Are we about to wrap this up. Yeah, we're about to wrap this up. I was just about to say, man, we even with Rand uh, added to the show, we managed to stick between our ninety-minute target, uh, and we're we're right there at ninety-five minutes. So, uh, thank you, uh, Rand, for uh, joining us on this special episode of Playing Xbox Podcast. Once again, this podcast is powered by Weapon Wheel uh, Podcast, Weapon Wheel Network, Weapon Wheel Patreon. So we appreciate you all for uh, joining us and supporting the show and supporting the uh, Patreon. And uh, thanks again, Rand, for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule because you're always busy around this time of year. So and I'm, I'm very you know thankful that we were able to have you join us today and have a, a awesome conversation. And uh, you know we're not going to have you as long as some other podcast you're about to be jo- joining over the next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. I appreciate I appreciate the hour and a half, the, the ninety minutes. You know, absolutely, man. It's been uh, great, Rand. Looking forward to you know your channel. Your channel is always uh, great uh, to visit this time of year. So you got anything coming up? Uh, uh, I'm been up to date for what you've done. You got anything coming up that you want to share? Uh, I mean, my prediction video will be out sometime next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, just trying to nail down some things, you know. Uh, so things I say on this show, I might change for my own video, okay. my final predictions, because you never know. Um, you know, I'll be, yeah, I mean, we got Xbox 2 without Jez this Friday, because uh, he's going to LA. So okay. that, that means you get to meet Attic. You'll be able to meet Jez if you want, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I've already uh, talked to him. Yeah, so... I'm looking forward to the showcase on Sunday, so it should be it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, awesome, cross man. fingers, knock on wood. Yeah, cross fingers, uh, knock on wood. Break, break the <laughs> break the uh, kids move curse, the crap curse, all that sort of stuff, right? So. <laughs> the crap curse. Yo, we do have two curses on us yeah. right now. I mean, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Yo, who who invited? Who gave crap the keys to the mansion again? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Attic, you got anything you want to sh- uh, share before we get out of here? Um, I. Uh, Next week's gonna be weird for are we even I mean we could have a show, it's just it's gotta be we have to record that bitch like Tuesday. Like because I'm leaving. No, I could record it th- from the out the hotel Saturday. Yeah, th- that's fine. Or would you prefer just to wait till after the show since we record on Saturdays and just record on Sunday? Oh, we record Sunday. We do a a post show show, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right, we could do that. So, and I guess that can just go live uh, that day, or I don't know. But you know, I appreciate everyone coming through. You know, Pete, even though there's been some some bitches in the comment section, uh, you know, I, I will say that for the most part, you know, you guys have been, uh, you know, very positive with it. No, appreciate it, man. It's been a great show. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, I got some videos going there. Uh, now that we move the podcast to the Weapon Wheel Patreon, that been it forced me to be to, to do more content on the channel. A lot of content I've been doing. Yeah, I don't agree with, it, but hey, it is what it is. But uh, make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel. Also, subscribe to Weapon Wheel Patreon to get first access to the Planet Xbox podcast. Thank you guys for supporting and uh, uh, being a part of this. Thank you again, Rand. It's been awesome. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. Peace.